Oh, hi. What the fuck are you doing in my goddamn house? Oh, that's today? <laughs> well, I guess we better get started. Um, first off, thank you guys for 500 subscribers. Somehow you like this stupid bullshit enough to get me that far. And I wanted to do something special for that very first milestone, so I solicited questions from my Twitter and Instagram from viewers like you. And we are going to get through them right now. And we're going to start this with a question that I get asked all the time. How do you find all those wacky cursed commercials? Well, since I'm doing weekly charts, I had this crazy idea to be doing commercials from around the time period of the charts, like, you know, February 1989, I found commercials from that, July 1968, and so on. I would just, like, put in the month and the year in YouTube and see what comes up. I usually try to go for the ones with the lower view count, because that's usually where you find a lot of the cursed shit. And the current year ones, well... It's pretty much anything goes. Uh, sometimes I'll just like type in some weird foreign country and find a commercial from that. You know, other times I just find like a hilarious low budget local commercial from somewhere. And sometimes I do something relevant like the Applebee's commercial. Pretty sure we all saw that one coming. Ha 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 ha. Now, I got the idea to do those commercials from watching old Oddity Archive episodes. More on that a little bit later. What is your favorite cursed commercial you found for a video so far? Well, I'm sure there were a lot. Like, in the 1968 videos, I included those cigarette commercials. Yeah, believe it or not, they were allowed to advertise cigarettes on television back then. It's true. I'm sure those of you in the know would probably remember that the Flintstones used to hawk for Winston cigarettes. <laughs> Yeah, that seems kind of funny in hindsight, doesn't it? Also, in my Best of February 1989 video, um, I had Millie Vanilli on the list, so I included this hilarious commercial about a Millie Vanilli class action lawsuit. Like, they were really taking that lip-syncing scandal seriously, weren't they? But I think my absolute favorite type of cursed commercial would be the Barry Glazer commercials. He's this local to Baltimore lawyer, and he makes some of the craziest commercials ever. Do yourselves a favor and look at shit up on YouTube. He is wild. Your favorite song on CLB? Um, would it be a cop-out to just say Knife Talk? I mean, it is really good. It is a very good 21 Savage and Metro Boomin' track that just has Drake on it. And Project Pat. I don't know. People tell me that Champagne Poetry is also a good song. It's fine, but I could do without the pitched up sample of that Michelle song. What do you think is the greatest year for the Hot 100 of the 2010s? And what are some trends in music you can see continuing on in the 2020s? Well, for the first question, it's kind of a tie between 2015 and 2019. Those two years were pretty damn loaded. And as for the second question, well, drill is pretty much going to be the sound of the 20s. It's definitely looking like that. There's also a lot of talk of hyperpop. I'm interested to see where that genre is going to go. And there's Afrobeat, too. That's shaping up to be a thing in the 2020s. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more of that as well. But I think the trend that might be continuing into the 2020s that I like the most is pop punk. It may just be my nostalgia for 2000s Hot Topic stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely enjoying this pop punk revival. And now we're going to go to the Instagram comments. When are you going to do a best and worst of the playlist that I sent you on your B-Day last year? Now, this was a playlist on the Hot 100 from December 10th, 1983, the day I was born. I wanted to do it this year. I really did. But there were a couple things that held me back from that. One, I got lazy and took too long with the current year stuff. And with list season around the corner, I gotta focus on that. And there's just too much to deal with and blah, blah, blah. 
The other thing is, I took a lot of looks at that chart, and it's going to be kind of tough for me to find 10 songs to talk shit about. Like, there are just not a lot of big stinkers that stick out to me. And the same is also true for that best list. There's just way, way loaded of the year. Although, I am thinking of doing something different for that best list. We'll see when the time comes. But as for when it's going to happen, I'm going to be aiming for next year. When I turn 39 in December of next year. God, I am so fucking old. And I will damn well try to do it. This has been on my table for a long time. Favorite food slash drink? And I got a couple of similar questions on Instagram too. I can't say I have like a single favorite food or a single favorite drink, just like a bunch of them. But okay, as far as the food goes, I mean, I do like chicken, pork, and beef, and all that other meat stuff. As far as fruits go, I like clementines, apples, bananas especially. Those are really good. Vegetables, I like those bags of frozen mixed vegetables that you find in the grocery store. Kale, I think, is better than lettuce. And as for french fries or mashed potatoes, well, it depends on what I'm eating with it. If I'm eating poultry, I would prefer mashed potatoes. But if I'm eating beef, I would prefer french fries. It's just a pairing kind of thing. And as for desserts and junk foods, well, I guess I like them all. Like, ice cream and cookies and all that other junk. I'm trying to eat less of it, though, because, you know, I I'm getting into that age where I gotta, like, really watch what I eat and such. As for drinks, well, I have a magic bullet in the kitchen. I like to make fruit smoothies with it. Soda, I mean, I used to like, but I find that I've been drinking less and less of it as time has gone on. I can confidently tell you that I like those Bang Energy drinks, but I will agree with you that those are a little much. As far as alcohol goes, well, I like beer. Vodka, whiskey, and rum, those are the kind of drinks that... They're only good when they're mixed in with existing drinks. You know, if I drink them straight up, it tastes like shit. And also, this is gonna get me yelled at by snobs, but I hate wine. It sucks. It just fucking sucks. If I have to drink wine, I would prefer the white wine because the red wine just tastes like fucking blah. I, I don't even know. And boxed wine is fucking toilet water, too. Who are some of your favorite non-music YouTubers? Well, I am a sports fan, so I like Urinating Tree, That's Good Sports, Five Points Vids, Tom Grassi, Scooter McGruder. Those are all pretty good YouTubers. Another one that I really like is the Wide World of Stadiums. He shows you all the stadiums in a given league and gives you facts about them and also throws in a few dad jokes, too. Video games, I've been very out of touch with video games for a while, but I do still like those angry video game nerd videos. Although I do blame him for all this discourse of accentuating the negative that's going on right now. I mean, that's what people come onto YouTube to see. Some guy yelling about shit that he hates. But hey, his videos are pretty goddamn well done, and I like the effort that he puts in. Another one that I really like is Console Wars. They're when these two guys, they compare the same game for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, and they throw in a bunch of funny skits along the way. Many of them involving a perverted puppet police officer. One channel that I really like is the Oddity Archive. It's this channel that just delves deep into all the weird shit about broadcast television or different formats or record ripoffs and such. That's the channel where I got the idea to include local commercial breaks from. There were a few videos where Ben would include a local commercial break, and it would be related to the topic that he was doing. Vocaloid? I am for it. It's like auto-tune or the synthesizer, an instrument to be used well or used poorly. And I gotta say, I'm kind of a sucker for stuff that sounds like a robot. Of course, there's Hatsune Miku, but Capsule does some pretty good Vocaloid stuff, too. Have you seen any videos from the channels Pop Dissected, Flashy, or Polyphonic, and what do you think of them? I have not seen those channels. 
I did look them up and glance at them a little. They seem like they really know their stuff. I might look into them a little later and maybe tell you what I think in the comments section. What was the first concert that you attended? First concert I ever attended was the Moody Blues in the late 80s. I was like five or six years old and I remember really liking that song they had. That, I know you're out there somewhere. Yeah, that one. Of course, me being a toddler at the time, I don't really remember much of it. There were a few other concerts that I went to that I do kind of remember. I saw Van Halen on tour when Gary Sharon was the lead singer. That was an experience. He was constantly requesting help from the audience for the old Van Halen songs, and then he was telling the audience what to do for the new songs. I... Gary Sharon experiment was a failure. I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers in the Foo Fighters, Anthony Kiedis in a Mohawk. Yeah. Most of the time, though, when I when I see a live show or something, it's it's usually at a small venue like the Auto Bar, which is a few blocks away from me. Saw MC Chris there. That was a really good experience. I also saw Acid Mother's Temple. And if you ever get a chance to see these guys live, do it. It is just incredible. What are your thoughts on bubblegum bass? Bubblegum bass, from what I understand, is a type of hyper-pop that is all about, like, deconstruction of pop music and it's high-pitched vocals that to sound feminine or shit I think I don't think I've listened to a lot of it but I did once look up this playlist on Spotify called bubblegum bass found this song that's pretty artsy I might need to listen to a few more stuff just to know what I really think about it in general but it is a style of music, I will give it that. And I do like Sophie and 100 Gex, but you know, that's like saying you only listen to Johnny Cash. R.I.P. Sophie, by the way. Favorite list you've done from the Billboard Hot 100 charts? By these, I mean a certain week in history on the Billboard Hot 100. There were a few. That best of June 1982, I absolutely loved doing it. There were a couple of songs on that list that I still listen to a lot. Murphy's Law and Nice Girls, those are still pretty damn good. There was also my Best of April 2016 list. Yeah, as cursed a year as that was for music, I was surprised how strong the selections were. Especially at number one, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I fucking did that either. And hell, that recent current year list that I did just last weekend, that was pretty good too. I am still so glad that all the songs that I wanted to put on the best list were still there that week. And let's go to the opposite now. Which of your worst of lists contained the absolute worst music? Well, again, going back to 2016, yeah, that really was a cursed year for music. Remember that I'm Just a Lost Boy from Neverland song? That was big back then. I still don't believe it. That 1968 one was also pretty cursed. Especially that You're Still My Favorite Girlfriend Alice Long song. So fucking cursed that one was. Oh, and also that Worst of July 1984 video I did like way back when I was first starting out, that one has a lot of cursed shit too. Especially obscene phone caller. We'll get back to that later. I will say this though, having done this channel for the past couple of years, I found that best lists were a lot more fun to make than worst lists. I mean, yeah, it's fun to like talk shit about stuff that you hate or laugh at something weird, but it's a lot more fun to work with music that you like and find underappreciated or hidden gems and even get something out of left field. What are some of your favorite EDM songs? Well, I do love me some EDM, so that's a pretty loaded question in itself. I do really like that Looking For Me song from last year. That was something I got in my grab bag in December 2020, and I've just been having it in heavy rotation on my Spotify ever since. Calvin Harris did an updated EDM version of Love Roar Coaster that I also thought was pretty cool. Regard also makes some pretty damn good stuff. Right at Secrets and You are really good. And Disclosure makes some pretty good stuff too. That stuff they did with Sam Smith was really good. And 
I also like that birthday song they did with Kalani. Yeah, a song about asking whether you can call your ex on his birthday just to check up on him. Uh, there's a certain sentiment to that. Ever been to California before? And if so, what's your favorite thing about that state? I've only been to California like once. I was two. I don't remember any of it. I will say this though. If I ever move to another state, it's definitely going to be somewhere on the West Coast, like Vegas or Portland. Those are the two I'm kind of considering. Favorite 60s and 80s one-hit wonders. Well, for the 60s, I like that 96 Tears song. That one's pretty deliciously dark. Eve of Destruction is another really good one. I mean, I don't think there's a song that really summed up the 60s better than that one. For the 80s, well, I like all the classics. You know, I Melt With You, Beds Are Burning, I Ran. I know most of them aren't really one-hit wonders, but, you know, they're one-hit wonders by popular opinion. Let's just call it that. Space Age Love Song is a really underrated and really good song, by the way. I like that Somebody's Watching Me song, but God, that obscene phone caller song that he followed up with was hilarious. If Alex had to bell, I like to And I like that new shoes, I can't wait. You know, the one that goes, oh, 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 oh. That one was, I have a little fondness for that one. And there's just too many others to name. I mean, they're, they're all pretty damn good. Top three favorite bands. Um, I'll say off the top of my head, um, Fenny and the Evolutions, the Jolly Green Giants, and the shitty Beatles. Okay, but if you want to list some real bands, well, here's some random ones. Marcy Playground, Weezer, and Ween. What are some of your favorite Pokemon? Well, when I was your age, we only had 150 Pokemon. Out of that batch, I would say the Evolutions are, well, that's an obvious answer. I mean, Evolutions are pretty cool. I also like the rock ones, Geodude and Onyx. You know, Pikachu and Raichu, of course. Those are, of course. Squirtle sells the best weed. As far as further generations go, of course, I love me the Fennekin. I also like Bidoof, and I also like Mudkip. So, you know, the meme Pokemons. Thoughts on Blaziken? He is strong as shit, and damn is he fire. Favorite song that should have been a hit? Well, there were a lot of them. Damage should have been a year-end hit. Uh, single Again from 2019 should have been a little bit bigger than it was. Ride It absolutely should have been a bigger hit. And what the hell, I'll, I'll also say that Head and Heart should have done a lot better over here. Your ranking of the three Kung Fu Panda movies. Well, I've only ever seen the first one, but if I were to rank them worst to best, I'd go with three, one, two. One thing I know about trilogies is the second one is always the strongest one and the third one is always the weakest one. I can't imagine that wouldn't be true of Kung Fu Panda. Favorite aspect about making videos? Editing is both my favorite and least favorite part about video making. It's my favorite part because, you know, all the stuff is recorded, all the stuff is gathered, it's time to put it in a coherent storyline or some shit like that, and that's when you're really making the product that you wanna make. And when I get into an editing groove, I, I just don't wanna stop. I just wanna keep going. I just wanna keep on going until it's done. It's like an adrenaline rush, so to speak. It's also my least favorite part because it's so fucking tedious. Just drag, drop, and trim, and cut, and drag, and drop, and trim, and lower volume, and drag, and drop, and click, and this, and that. The same shit over and over again. But in the end, it's all worth it, I guess. How come I didn't see the necklace in some of your shots? So you would notice.
Favorite rock metal bands. I did grow up on rock music, so I guess the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and The Who, and all that other classic rock stuff, Steely Dan, The Eagles, I mean, those are pretty good. I also grew up in the 90s, so I liked Metallica's Black Album a lot. I really liked a lot of Metallica material from the 80s and 90s. Guns N' Roses was also pretty good. Corn, I was into that shit as a teenager. Limp Bizkit, I'm not gonna lie, I did like their stuff as a teenager as well. But if I were to pick one rock type band that I would probably call my favorite right now at this point, it would be Everclear. And this leads us to the next question I've got. Favorite album from when you were a teen? Now, I was a teenager in the late 90s and early 2000s, and that was a pretty damn good year for music and albums, wasn't it? But if I were to pick one album from my teenage years that I would call my favorite right now, it would be So Much for the Afterglow by Everclear from 1998. This is Everclear at their best. Like, a lot of really melodic songs on there. You got Everything to Everyone, I Will Buy You a New Life, One Hit Wonder, that's my favorite single from the album. And for non-singles, I really like the title track, Normal Like You, White Men in Black Suits. I think my favorite song from that album is Why I Don't Believe in God. It's got a really good banjo, and uh, he gets insanely emotional in this one. Now we're down to one more question. What got you into making music-based content? So I've always been around music in some way or form. My parents were both radio DJs when I was a kid, and sometimes they would sneak in and record an album from the radio's library onto a cassette tape, so we had this expansive collection of, like, classic essential classic rock albums from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But as far as what got me into making this channel in particular, well, like every other make-believe music critic, I was first inspired by watching Time the Shadows videos. For me, it was back in 2012-2013 when I first started watching his stuff. I started kind of glancing at the Billboard Hot 100 just to see what he would talk about next. And then about a couple of years later, I got like some side hustle food delivery job, and I had the Top 40 station on while I was doing the job because I just didn't really want to fiddle around. And it stuck. And that's where I got my appreciation for pop music from. Now, as for weekly charts videos, the reason why I'm doing those as opposed to year-end charts... I have a subscription to SiriusXM. And every weekend, the Decade channels would have this countdown show. It would be like the top 40 from this week in 1984, or the top 30 from this week in 96, or the top 30 from this week in 07. And then the 70s on 7 would have the American top 40 from that week, with Casey Kasem being Casey Kasem. May he forever rest in peace. But I love doing the weekly charts because, you know, it's more than just the stuff that everyone remembers. It's a lot of stuff that nobody remembers. And that can be a real treasure trove. Sometimes you'll find an underappreciated gem, and sometimes you'll just find something stupid and weird. You don't know what the fuck that was doing on the charts. And of course, the last thing that got me into making music-based content, all the other music YouTubers. Sean, Ethan, Diane, Liz, Ben, I see you. There were other topics that I thought about, but... I eventually decided on weekly charts, and, uh, well, that's where it stuck. And with that, our Q&A is over. I'd like to thank those of you who asked me questions on my Twitter and Instagram, and I'd also especially like to thank those of you who watch this channel. It's been a really crazy past couple of years, and it brings me a lot of joy to know that through all the chaos and death and destruction and violence and all that other shit that's been going on these past couple of years, you guys have welcomed me into your home. If only for 30 minutes at a time to help you forget about all the shit that's going on. And I can't thank you all enough for that. So thanks for 500 subscribers. Here's to the next 500.